Hey everyone, how are you all doing? Hope you're all doing great. Uh, I, I have an interview in about 20 minutes, so we'll see if I uh, can get through all this. And I know my hair looks different, I just washed it and everything. I'm trying to look professional for the interview, and sometimes it can be difficult uh, with the more hair you have, uh, especially when it's last minute. So this is an update pretty much on my life. It is, uh, I, I realized that Sometimes I feel that I I am spreading myself thin, and I think that's you know that that's the feeling of being overwhelmed. But I'm recognizing, or at least I'm trying, I'm making sure to remind myself that some stress is good stress. You ever have plans to do certain things in your life, or you're you're wanting to do some things and you're getting prepared for it, or you're setting setting aside time in the future, near future, to get it done, right? And then. It's like when that moment comes, a bunch of other stuff happens, just everything clouds in, and it's not even always bad stuff, right? Sometimes it can be, and excuse the squeaking, that's the chair. Sometimes it's bad stuff, but a lot of times it's just a whole bunch of opportunities present themselves at once, and you wanna take advantage of them, but you do not wanna overwork yourself to where you're not sleeping much, or you have no time to actually be home or to relax, and you end up feeling you must turn some down. Sometimes you don't, a lot of people wanna grind and hustle, kinda of like what I'm doing, I'm about to be doing, but sometimes you reflect and think, did I accept, did I take on too much? Did I agree to take on so much? And will I end up not presenting the best of myself or pro producing the best product uh, when it comes to each project or task that you agree to or choose to take on or that is given to you and it it's it's almost it's funny because it all happens at once and then at, just as much as it is frustrating i guess saving is an example because i feel a lot of people can relate to this scenario of wanting to save money and you are in this position where you can start saving money and once you get to a certain amount, all of a sudden it's, it's like this money that you saved for a rainy day or emergency. It's like the emergency pops up out of nowhere. It just decides to pop up. The thing with this is that a lot of times people after fixing that emergency don't continue saving and that becomes an issue. But this, this is not a financial video. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just giving a scenario that a lot of stuff, almost nothing happening during one time in your life and then everything decides to happen at once. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. So this interview is for a software development position. So this position is for a software development position with the company, IT company. And it's my second interview. Well, the first one was like an initial and now I'm doing an actual interview. Starting tomorrow, the 21st of April till the 1st of May, Atlanta Film Festival is happening and I am a uh, photography assistant for it. So for the next, what is that, 10 days, about eight of those days, maybe seven, just seven of those days, I'll just be out there taking pictures and on the day that I'm not doing it, one of those days I have to be on set for a show and then the other two days I'm uh, writing meeting up with some people about writing up a, a film. So I'll be pretty busy. But on top of that, of course, I have this interview and then that's actually gonna, if, if, I, if I do well, it'll set me up. I actually will end up having another interview next week, right, for the same, for the same position. And I got accepted for a software development program at no cost. It was like a scholarship kind of thing so that I can, Take on, get on, take, get more training, get more practice and education on programming and software. So all that starts, or all, the program starts next week. The interviews next week. The festival goes into next week. I have a shoot next week, and I'm still doing school, and so I have that as well. The reason I took a lot of these things on is because I wanted to have options there. You know, it's like applying to different things, and whatever comes to me, I'll take that. And if something else comes up, but I prefer this, then maybe I could turn it down. But these all are all avenues that I'm interested in. Of course, I wanna uh, take advantage of this 
film festival to network and to also it's good practice right for my photography going out and i want to get some you know some good pictures for myself and some video for maybe a, a future vlog video right for, for to show you all i'm in school because i'm in school trying to finish that and i took this uh, i applied for this scholarship for this uh, coding program uh, in case i didn't get a call back for this job that i applied for over a month ago and figured i'll just continue you know educating myself schooling while i'm doing these side projects and side jobs getting some extra money and doing all that it's not that i didn't think I wasn't worthy or deserving or going to get all these things. Just wasn't expected that I was gonna, just everyone was gonna approve of everything. But I think that says a lot about me. What I mean by that is obviously I'm, I, I've, well not obvious to you maybe, but I've become a better person as far as how I treat myself and exuding this confidence and be, certain behavior that's very, I would like to believe is welcoming. I think I'm a nice person. I'd like to be nicer. I'm always looking to connect with people as best as I can or relate to them and understand them and just work towards building a good relationship and rapport with anyone I come into contact with or interact with. I also be, have learned to always put my best foot forward, even when exhausted. And I think I've done that when it comes to applying for jobs, networking and on the professional business front. Uh, and I've, I've been able to communicate relatively well in that area. And I, I can kind of tell that I'm trying to articulate my words a lot with these with this video, maybe probably previous videos before, especially because this is not scripted. I just decided, hey, I have time and I've been wanting to do this, so why not take advantage of it? I do want to know a lot of these things. Well, actually all of these things are things that I want to do and want to take advantage of and want to be a part of. And I think I'm more willing to take on these things because it's something that I actually want to do. And I'm very happy and excited for these opportunities opposed to doing something just because it's bringing in money for me to survive or because it's expected of me or because someone else wants me to do it. I've had to learn a lot about myself and part of that or after learning a bit about myself, I had to become a friend of myself, for myself, and let go of certain things such as obligations to specific people, particularly my parents. We end up going on about, I'm doing this to make them proud or to gain their acceptance and approval. It's like this obligation because they raised us, right? They allowed us to live under a roof, provide us food and so on and so forth. And of course the societal pressures are also on us, weighing on us, but that's one thing. That a lot, the reasons why we do a lot of things that we do with our parents, right? Some people go to college just because their parents expect it. And maybe it gets to a point where they think they're rebelling because they're changing their major, but they're still going to school because of their parents and not so much because of them wanting the experience and wanting to get an education or learn more. I had to really, I had to really remove myself in that, in that sense. Uh, like the, the business degree, I was getting that of course. It kind of helps. It's, it's a pretty broad degree and kind of helps with certain positions, but it was my parents wanted me to go to school and get a degree. And I, I've reached a point where I actually see benefit in college as far as experience and learning a lot of stuff and actually learning what you actually enjoy and what you are interested in. But I got to this point of not really wanting to do it for them. And so the next degree I want to pursue is in film and they may not be too happy with it, especially because it's not, it doesn't lead to a guaranteed degree or, or an ideal career as others may. Oh, no degree guarantees a job, at least as far as I know, no degree does. I had to start getting involved in things that maybe took up more time than other things that may have bring in more money or the money that other that's more secure, right? Because I'm getting a decent amount of money doing other things, but they're not, it's something that could end at any moment, right? It's not a secure job. It's not as secure as a nine to five. And I know that my parents are a bit weary of it and they're aware of that because they keep asking about you know, what 
do you want, what do you really want to do? That's kind of what they ask. What do you really want to do? As if that's not something I really want to do, right? That's being in film and media and art is, that's my dream, right? That's something I love to do. I love making these videos. I love talking to y'all, even though I don't know how many of y'all actually listen. You may hear me, I don't know if y'all listen. Also with that obligation or doing something that's traditional, such as a nine to five, or getting a career that just because, or getting a job, I'm not gonna call it a career, just because it brings in that money, a lot of people end up staying in that safe position. It's safe and it brings in what makes them feel secure enough that they don't need to worry about anything else and they become complacent and they just end up on that road, just on autopilot. And it's it's not, I wouldn't say it's bad, it's, it's just they end up ignoring other things such as self, fulfillment it's like that mat the maslow's hierarchy of needs right and once people get to like that security level it's everything else they just don't care about especially because it takes risk and takes betting on yourself and going out of your comfort zone into areas that make you nervous donald glover once said if it makes you nervous you're doing it right so i interpret that as if you're getting into uh, an area that makes you uncomfortable or you know, doing something that maybe is new to you that you're not familiar with, then you're doing the right thing because it leads to growth and learning and realizing stuff about yourself and what you may actually be good at. And I've learned quite a bit of what I'm good at and it's not necessarily something I ideally planned, had planned maybe a few years ago getting into, but I realized I enjoy it. It still connects me to other aspects of something that I do like and am attracted to. But I'm pretty good at this one thing. I still enjoy it and it still allows me to do what I, I want to do and do what I love. Some people feel overwhelmed because of so many options and opportunities that are presented to them. They may be really good at something and or have the right connections that they're all giving these opportunities to this person, allowing them to do these things and the person doesn't make a choice because it's too much, right? Or they feel that they're fine where they are because they can lose it all. And when you have too many options, sometimes when you pick one, what if this one's better? What if this leads to a better outcome? I understand that mindset or that thought, but that's what leads you to being stagnant. That leads you to not making a choice in the first place and just continue on that autopilot. Then when those opportunities are gone, it's almost as if these pe the pe these people that are that are complacent are not, they don't think about it. Sometimes they think, what if? And those are the people that end up telling you that story that you meet five years later that say, you know, I could have done this. I could have been with this one person. I could have been famous. I could have been rich. I could have had this opportunity. I turned it down though, as if we're supposed to applaud you for turning down, doing something that you still want to do that would probably make you happier than your current life. Or let's, yeah, your current life. I was about to try to be more politically correct, but yeah, your current life situation, you'd probably be happier if you chose this, but you chose not to. But because you had that opportunity, you wanna gloat to me about it. I've had a lot of opportunities to do a lot of things and I turned them down. I'm honestly looking back, I wonder, man, I should have probably took them. I'll get back to you guys in a bit. I have an interview to go to in four minutes. I, I gotta make sure I'm in the right mindset. But I'll, I'll let you guys know how it is. So give me, well, for you guys, it'll probably be like one second, but give me 30 minutes. So my interview is done and I know my hair is weird. Um, I'm gonna fix it anyway later. You'll have to, yeah, you're gonna have to pretty much take me like this for the rest of it. So the interview went relatively well. I mean, you, you never really know until you get a call or not get a call right or an email uh, I I think I did well put my best foot forward I I practiced and rehearsed and prepared myself for this interview did the research I needed to uh, establish my examples for certain questions I rehearsed them practice them uh, I even had a notebook nearby right I take notes and uh, when when I find something interesting that they say about the company or the position and I write down my questions that I have for them and I even let them know that I have a notebook. I, I used to be nervous about telling them. I wanted to feel like, oh, I have everything in my head there already. 
but they have notebooks sometimes, right? They have clipboards and they they have to you know organize everything. So I can do the same and I have that and I let them know, hey, I, I'm writing down notes uh, for things that you say and I have questions here. So I, I do that and I have it for them. And it's, it's helped a lot, especially when it feels like I'm interviewing them as well, which you should be, right? If you're interviewing the company, is it right for you? Do you fit or does the company fit for you? Anyway, I realized this is something I really enjoy, right? If I were to get this position, it'd be something that I'm into, something that I'd like doing, and something that I could see myself doing for a, a good amount of time, right? Until something else that maybe allows more freedom comes along. You never know, because I mean, we're always, you know, we're always pursuing that or wanting that. So many of us are, at least. I'm gonna take this off. Sorry, I, I don't. My interview's done. I'm gonna take this off. I'm not worried about this. It is much easier for people such as myself, without kids, not married, to say things, right? Especially because I have no other responsibilities or no responsibilities or obligations to anyone else except myself. Uh, and at the moment, it's something I enjoy. Uh, and it's easy for me to say that, but even in certain situations, I think that's also having kids and being married is also a good excuse to keep someone from making any choices that they want to make. Again, scenarios are different. Everyone's situation is different. And I know people where they can't just quit their job and just dip out. I know people like that. I know people that can't just move on to something. So I think it's all situational. So of course, when I'm speaking in these terms, I'm speaking to specific people, but there's always a fun, right? If you are presented these opportunities, instead of brushing them off, assessing them and how you are able to work in them, if you are able to, and if it fits into your schedule, check if it works, if you are able to, if you are willing to put in extra time after you get off work to put towards that, you know? And if you have the time to schedule that, especially if you believe in yourself and believe that it will lead to a better lifestyle or better life in the future. Maybe it's not a better life for you, but at least for your children, right? That's something that I think parents want. That is all I have for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're all staying safe. The weather's getting better. It's getting pretty warm. I love it. I love the humidity as well. Uh, it's not gonna be as humid as Okinawa, but I like it. Feels good. And y'all stay safe. Y'all take care of each other. Check up on one another, check up on yourself. I'm feeling pretty good. I've been really motivated. My challenge to write a script a week is paying off. I'm writing more than a script a week. Uh, actually two days ago, my friend, or not my friend, my cousin had actually asked me if I could write a script for, for five people. There were five of us hanging out. And I ended up writing a short script for within about 30 minutes. A good script, right? Beginning, end, right? Beginning, middle, end. Just everything. And included everyone. Of course, some people had smaller parts than others. Uh, one person in particular had the majority of it. But it was five of us set. They loved it. I think I did very well, especially with only with the within that short period of time. And it was it was, it was good. It was good. And I, I think it part of it is working with other creatives or being around other creative people. And it's not they're not all writers. Some make music, some are photographers, some just love talking about the art. And it's led to this creative high. And I'm taking advantage of it in writing instead of just thinking ideas and and telling myself, oh, when I have the time, I'll sit down and write it, right? Uh, that happens so so many times to us. Uh, we say we're gonna get start working on something when we have the time. We create the time. It's about scheduling your priority, not prioritizing your schedule. It's about actually putting it down. And if you're out and about and you don't have a notepad to write it down, you have your phone. I do that all the time. Every time I have an idea and I say, I'm gonna write this when I get home, a lot of times that idea goes away or I know, I remember that I had an idea, but I don't remember the idea. So as soon as I have an idea, I write it down, right? If, if I have time, I'll end up writing 
paragraphs of that idea and you'll you know i'll end up just being that person on the phone and people might think i'm texting or whatever but i have this idea to put down if i'm talking hanging out with people talking to coworkers, friends peers colleagues if i'm out and i'm in a social environment and i don't have time to really be on my phone i'll really write it down a quick bullet points i'll even shorten the words and write all the important points of it and usually i am able to pick up from there when once i get back to back to my space to my office anyway hope you enjoyed the video uh, remember that potential has no limit and we out